What is up, people of the interwebs? This is Haley back at it again with another buy, try it, or deny it podcast for the month of March slash April. And this podcast, we got a special guest. I'll introduce him first, just because he's special. Uh, we have a new writer. We have Cade joining our podcast. That's me. Hello, my name is Cade. Hi, Cade. <laughs> And then we just have our normal, regular, uh, lame crew of Brennan and Mike. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, Joke. <laughs> We're gonna roll it out for the month of April. We're gonna call this the month of remakes. And we're gonna first kick it off with Resident Evil um, 3. We're starting a little bit backwards this month. What can I say? It's, it's April Fool's, or at least it's coming up. So April Fool's, you got a backwards podcast. Resident Evil 3. The genre is a uh, survival horror. It's developed and published by Capcom platform P- uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It's releasing April 3rd. Take it away. Has anyone played the original Resident Evil 3 here? Yes. Okay. So, Mike. And, okay, so you, you didn't play the demo. You watched the demo, right? Yeah. So, okay. First off, I, I was very just impressed just in general just just not comparing it to the original at all just impressed based on its own standalone thing similar to resident evil 2 very cool also nemesis is terrifying and the whole mechanic of like him just kind of popping up anywhere and everywhere is just terrifying and honest to god like I, it was one of those demos where like it was one of those gameplay things where i was having more fun where I was like, th- I would totally have more fun watching this and playing it, but holy shit, even watching it was like, I'm on the edge of my seat. This is great. Yeah, um, especially I think the viewpoint now adds a little bit to that terror because before it was fixed camera, you know. Yeah. And I'm- the angles back then were okay when Nemesis would just pop out, but now you know that you're over the shoulder, it, it seems fucking terrifying when he's behind you because you can't see him now. Oh my god. I didn't even think of that. Is that, is that, was, that was that a big thing in the Resident Evil 2 remake too, where people were like, "Oh yeah, the the, the camera angles just made." Was it Mr. Mr. M? Mr. M? This is how little Mr. Yeah, Mr. X. X. Jeez, this is how little I know about Resident Evil. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but was that the same thing? Like, because I can totally see that. I can totally just see him coming behind you and being like, "Oh well, I'm fucked." And you just have <laughs> no idea because your over the shoulder perspective just kills you. But that's hilarious, though. Not yeah. hilarious. Well, I mean, maybe to watch. All of the, all of the, like, when I was first watching the demo, I was watching, like, actual streamers play it and stuff, and, like, their reactions to Nemesis was by far the funniest thing I think I've ever seen. Like, one guy was just screaming nope over and over and over <laughs> until he finished the demo, like, and, and then it, like, he crushes through the wall at the end of the demo, and he just ran away, like, it's just great. <laughs> the one thing I've heard is that, um, so like the the demo was really short. The demo was really short. So are people like? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, yeah, it's okay. Um, demo short. So like, is the game itself gonna be kind of on the shorter side? Um, I'm trying to remember how long the original was. Ten, fifteen hours, maybe. Hmm. All right, that's not too bad. I only ask because like the demo was just really. It was very. I don't know. It was again. I've never played a Resident Evil game before, so like I don't know if these games are meant for replayability. I think the second one was right because there was two different stories. Yeah, the second one had two different stories, and then they give you reasons to um, play the game again. Very cool. Like in two, uh, I'm not spoiling anything, but you can play as a block of tofu. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> So there is incentive to go back and replay the game. If you play as a block of tofu, does it change all of the zombies to just very health conscious people? <laughs> I mean, technically, because you know they're eating you and your tofu. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> hey, do you have any experience with Resident Evil? Um, from a distance. From a distance. Interesting. Like, it's vain staying very far away from it because I'm a massive baby. Okay, well, I, I'm in this. I'm in the same. I boat. watched. Yeah, I watched the demo for Resident Evil Three. I started it. I downloaded it and I started it, and I got 
I think five minutes in, there was the one moment early on where you go down an alleyway and it's very dark and there's a light at the end of the alleyway mm. and there's only one zombie on the ground, but another one comes out from the left side and I shut my Xbox off and threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, the exact I, reason I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I can't say anything positive about Resident Evil 3 other than it looks very good. The visuals are very well done, but I'm going to hate the game because it makes me scared. So if you like being scared, consider that a stamp of endorsement. It's very scary. <laughs> Honestly, no, like, I'm like, I, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> like, I'm just not going to play it ever. <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy the fact that people are getting the shit scared out of them. The oh. demo that I watched had someone screaming the whole time, and that made me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> This is making me excited because I am a horror junkie. Oh, dude, you thrive off this. Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> so like so Mike, what were your what I guess what were your like general overview thoughts on the demo itself? And like especially with the hindsight that you have of the original. I mean, it looks like they're just doing what they did with the remake of two, just part three this time. Interesting. Yeah. Um you know, they're changing the camera. Um, it looks like they might be changing the locations of some things just to keep it a little fresh. Because I know that's why they did that in 2. was So you didn't fully get the old game. There were surprises now because it was like, oh, I played the old game. I should know everything. And then they threw extra shit in there. You're like, what the hell, man? I just played the old game. What the? Honestly, that's pretty cool, though. Because, like, yeah, because you have to account for, again, when you... I guess when you make a remake like this, you have I guess you have to imagine that like at least half the people buying it have already played it, and yeah. the other half are just new. So that's a really weird line to walk. But the man, if they can pull it off. Buys, that'd be really great. Exactly, dude. Like you there's just so many moving pieces. Um shit. I I don't know. I hope that I mean obviously it was it's gonna sell well, it's Resident Evil. And they're just gonna yeah. do what they did last time, and last time look at what look at what they did. And then It'll looking cool. into the distant, distant future, if this one sells well enough, would they do a remake, or are they already working on a remake of Resident Evil 4? I wouldn't be surprised if they already are, to be completely yeah. honest with you. I don't know, because that game's already on every big... console imaginable. Shay. I just, I don't know, it's one of those things where it's like, again, I know nothing about Resident Evil, but I know that with Leon, right? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, you make myself look like such a moron there. Okay, Leon. This is the only character I know. It's like the only thing, and it was on Resident Evil Four was on GameCube. That's the only reason I know. Like it, the cover is just so memorable to me, and I've never even played the game, so I kind of hope that they remake it just because it's like a. Uh, I feel like four. I don't. Again, I haven't played the series. Is four not a staple? I mean, uh, four is one of the big boys. Yeah. yeah. Right? Four was considered like the best one. Yeah, that I guess that's why I'm saying like, yeah, man, they're they're app, they're already working on a four remake, right? Like, they got. And I'm pretty sure that the original Resident Evil Four was also just a big deal for the industry itself. That's when it, I think, it popularized the movement for third person over the shoulder shooters. Yeah, it did. Because after that, uh, games like Gears of War came out. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is, was did it go from the? Yeah, so I guess it did went go from the over the shoulder from three to four, right? And is that the one where you can't move while you're shooting, or is that all of them? I'm trying to remember which one they introduce the whole moving while shooting, right? Because I remember that being like a, a Resident Evil staple. You can't move while you shoot, so yeah. you got to do one or the other, and it's like that's terrifying. Just as you <laughs> said that, I got very anxious. <laughs> you right, like. <laughs> I'm so used to running and shooting. I've been playing Doom Eternal this last week, so that thought is just heresy. <laughs> don't, don't say that. <laughs> Man, that's probably such a, a a jump from Resident Evil to Doom. Holy shit. <laughs> I hate zombie games, so we'll just leave it at that. If you want me scared and crying in the middle of the night, sure. That, that's, how, that's how that happens. Um... No, I'm good. I'll skip this one and like the whole goddamn <laughs> series. But I would like to see Brennan play it so he can scream like a little girl. No, no absolutely not. 
<laughs> Absolutely not. Please. I should have played the demo. I should have played the demo and recorded me have. playing the demo. You should have. Oh, we can live actually, stream it. You still oh. can. You still can. The game's not out yet. Oh, dear God. Don't encourage you. <laughs> Wait for that next <laughs> month, guys. <laughs> you heard it first. It's happening. I made oh, it no. real. You're welcome. <laughs> It's gonna I'm be just the gonna... most viral video on our YouTube. Oh, <laughs> oh no, please. I'm just gonna avoid that little diner because I think that's where Nemesis pops up. I'm just not gonna go there. Fantastic. I'm just not gonna do the demo. I'm just gonna sit in the intro area and just look at all the trash cans. You heard it first. We're gonna make Brennan <laughs> uh play the play the demo. Okay. So now that I finally get my wish of Brennan playing a horror game, let's let's No. Let's lean off of horror and go to something that's a little cutesy. I don't know if you really want to call it cutesy, but uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, did we all play the demo? Yes. Yes. Watched it. Cannot play it. That works. We're good. Count. <laughs> um, it's an action JRPG. It's developed and published by Square Enix. It's coming out on the PS4. And it's coming out on April 10th. And I'm just going to lead this off with, I played it on normal and fucking died. All right. I was going to ask you, how the hell did you do that? Okay. okay. So, it was harder than I thought. <laughs> like, the beginning wasn't hard. I got to that goddamn ending boss crab thing, and I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. And I just fucking died. You called Scorpion the big machine? Yeah, the Scorpion. Yeah, I died. So then I switched it to easy and killed it in like 30 seconds. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, I also wasted every Phoenix down I had in that fight. That fight was just <laughs> stupid hard for me for some reason. Bear didn't do anything. Oh my God. And you just I had to keep switching to him to do what he needed to do uh, and switch back to Cloud real quick. Yeah. I wish that Barrett was the main character. Uh, okay, me too, honestly. I really like it. Like, but Cloud is great. Cloud's always been great, and I really like Cloud in this new rendition. Like, he's a lot more uh, funny, I guess. I mean, he was always kind of funny, but Barrett is just, oh. I, oh my god. And, like, the shit that happens to Barrett later on in the game, oh, beautiful. I, I, mm! <laughs> <laughs> I love Barrett, but in the demo, he was so useless, it hurt. He's the coolest <laughs> character by far. It was just a, a big buff guy with a gun on his hand. Awesome. And he cares about the environment. Awesome. <laughs> but he was so useless. Oh my god. Oh. But I have to say though, I, I was, I've never, I'm only recently playing Final Fantasy VII for the first time, like as of a couple months. And I was absolutely blown away by just the recreation of everything. Like it was almost near one to one. And anything that yeah. they kind of improved on, I thought was amazing. The battle system was a little weird to get used to at first, but I I dug it really hard. Like, it didn't feel quite as floaty as Kingdom Hearts as I thought it was going to. And you couldn't just button mash against bosses especially, or like mini-bosses and stuff. It forced you to use the break mechanic and the different abilities and the spells. God, it was just so good. I just had such a good time. I want to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that secret ending, man. There was a secret ending to the demo? What? Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Bitch, There's where? There's a secret ending in their demo. Kate, did you know about this? You watched it. Didn't you not see I the secret see ending? The secret ending. Uh, maybe the ending I saw was the secret ending. I don't know. I thought it was a demo. I didn't know anyone could change the endings to their demos. What secret endings in a demo? Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now I have to replay it. <laughs> God damn it. I, I don't understand. How do you get the secret ending? Oh, I don't know. I just know the secret ending. God damn it, Mike. <laughs> you bring that information to the table and you don't have all of it? What is wrong with you? Did you get the secret ending? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because I looked it up afterwards because I heard a couple weeks ago, oh yeah, the Final Fantasy VII demo has a secret ending. Okay. And I was like, okay. Spoilers, so I played the. What is it? It's like a five second clip of Cloud and Sephiroth. I mean, oh, it's nothing. Oh. It's nothing important. Teaser. It's like a secret teaser. I don't mind that. You not see Sephiroth in. No, no, you don't. I guess you don't. Not, the, right. not on the demo, no. I don't know. I found it too easy. Found it too easy? What? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, Season veteran over there. Like, 
It's too easy. <laughs> Dude, it's I'm a new battle brag. system. I'm not trying to brag or anything. It's just I found it to be maybe because I played a lot of Kingdom Hearts, so I'm kind of used to it. Um, um but it it did feel a little easy to me. Similar in any way to play to the Final Fantasy 15 combat. Yeah, it is similar to that. Yeah. Okay. Y- yes. Yes and no. You're not warping way. around, but it's still kind of that, you know, faster paced action RPG instead of a turn based, you know. D- right. Yeah, and like, um, I think one of my one of my biggest problems with 15 was that couldn't you just like hold down the button to dodge? Yeah. Isn't that a thing? Yeah, there's none of that here. You 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 have to time your dodges, and mm-hmm. like that was something that I really liked. like. Like I think in Final Fantasy 15 too, if you just held down the attack button, you would just chain everything. Again, there's more nuance to button inputs in this one. At least that's how it felt. Like it didn't yeah. feel quite as floaty as 15. Just from watching the demo, Cloud looks like with his enormous Buster Sword, he looks like he has a lot more oomph to his attacks. Oh, for sure. It feels and like that. With that Punisher mode or whatever, like the second attack mm-hmm. mode, yeah, that felt really cool and like it felt really satisfying to pull off. It did feel like you had an oomph behind the Buster Sword. I'm just a little conflicted because I've played the original three times now. Um, That's a long game. Just, yeah. Uh, 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 and it's just, I don't know. It, it was nice seeing some of the set pieces because the set pieces were really nostalgic, you know, going into the reactor and everything. Mm. Fighting the scorpion. I remember fighting the scorpion in the original. Um, but I, I don't know. I think I need to see more of remake before I can really make a definitive. Like, am I going to get it or not? Right. Possibly. Like, how much of the game is in it since they're dividing it into parts? Um, supposedly, the entire Midgar section from the original is in there. They're just adding right. a bunch of st- extra things for you to do between all the old parts okay. because in the old game it would always be like you know you would do something it would fade to black and then you'd be somewhere new right. now it's when you do something they actually put stuff for you to do in the fade to black section and then you go back to what was originally in the original game okay that makes sense it's definitely interesting um it's uh especially like when they had that clip of like what they were going to show off next in the next episode of Cloud, like leaving the reactor and getting ambushed by all the soldiers, that scene in the game didn't really take that long. But in the demo, it seems like they're putting a very heavy emphasis on like this is the next portion of the game, like Cloud's running away. So it does seem like they're taking moments that were kind of small and then just stretching them out for better or worse. Right. Yeah. Do we know why they've decided to cut it into parts and if each part is going to be um, kind of like what Telltale do- has done? Um, you have to buy each part or is it just going to be you pay for the game $60 and then you get all the parts as they're released? Uh, payment wise, they haven't said anything about that yet. If you have to buy every part separately. At least to my knowledge, I don't know. Um, They said that the reason they separated into parts was... It was an interview with the producer, um, I think, last week. He said they cut it into parts for quality reasons. That if they had just done the whole original game, quality would have dropped. But by doing episodes and giving themselves um, time to work on each episode, it's going to improve the quality, especially the graphical quality. Makes sense. I like that. Especially with how long this game is, I feel like that's definitely a benefit um, to them. But also to the player, I feel like it sets up those points where you, once you get to the end of a section, you stop and you can fully digest that section and be like, oh my god, like this happened. Instead of playing through this super long game and you get to the end and you're just like, well shit, what just happened? (laughs) My only fear, though, is that they're going to take this game and then they're going to take the three parts and just make each one 60 bucks and then say, here's one game split into three, 180 bucks. Have a good day. That's the worst and case scenario. That's that's my fear as well. And three months after the third game comes out, here's all three of them in one bundle for <laughs> don't, 
don't don't even give them that idea, Cade. What are you doing? <laughs> you are listening into this right now. Yes, like, oh, we're that's gonna a good cut that part idea. out later. In <laughs> They're like, that's genius. Oh my god, we're gonna make more money. <laughs> Are you are you working for Square? Holy shit! Um, <laughs> I may be, and I can confirm that Sora is the next Smash Ultimate character. Oh god damn! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> I've been told that Sora is going to be the next Smash character for like the past year. He's actually going to be the next Smash character twice. Oh shit! Uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts one Sora, Sora and Kingdom Hearts three Sora. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no Riku? God damn. <laughs> Fuck doing costumes. It's two separate characters. <laughs> no Riku, but Goku will be another Smash character. Ooh, I'll take a Goku. Uh, Goku. Super Saiyan Blue or Ultra Instinct? Oh, both. <laughs> I, want, I want Kyle Ken Goku as well. If you don't give me Kyle Ken, I don't want it. Send it back. Smash Ultimate's broken. Get this out of my face, please, um. Sakurai. God, let, let, no, please. Listen, I suggest that we put Kratos in Smash. That's just me. Sorry, that was loud. <laughs> I so want excited. to see his muscles smash things here. Like, Can we have bearded Kratos? I guess that might just be a skin. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I would have to take It's bearded that Kratos or nothing, so... Would there be uh, his ultimate smash is actually a sex mini game? Yes, absolutely. Excited. Yes, he vigorously pounds his opponents. Um, what? I'm much less excited. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Okay, oh we're moving God. on. Uh, enough of the sex puns. I did that myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to hell. Uh, trial of Ma- Mana. Is it Mana? Mana? English is hard. Uh, it's an action RPG. It's developed and published by Square Enix. It's coming out on the Switch, PC, and PS4. And it's coming out uh, April 24th. Yeah, I never played the original. I never this one. So I, I don't... But... Okay, well, Kate, Kate and I were talking earlier before the, the podcast thing started. Before we hit record. Uh, this game looks like Dragon Quest. And I dig it. We we both dig it. Very nice visuals. Yeah. I, I never even heard of the original Trials of Mana until this remake was announced. But I feel like when was this announced? Was it in 2018? Have we been God. waiting that long? I'm not. I, I thought it was last E3. It last might have been. Because I know. Years ago. <laughs> no, yeah, it wasn't like super long ago. Yeah. Um, but they were like, they were pushing. Because um, I remember on the eShop, they like took the older games and put them in a collection of some kind and then they put that out on the eShop or that's coming out on the eShop the, the, the old Trials of Mana is also being ported over to the Switch somehow and this is like a remake of that so I'm I, I'm very much confused as to like what the hell Trials of Mana even is anymore on the Switch you know what I mean yeah yeah um I did play the demo they just released the demo uh, it does look a lot Got that Dragon Quest kind of, you know, feel to it. The anime kind of feel to it. Um, but the combat, I don't know if this was true for the original. The combat kind of reminded me of a Tales game. Okay. Interesting. See, again, like, again, before we were talking, before the podcast, we were talking about Charles Man, I always confuse it with Chrono Trigger. So I always assume that it had a Chrono Trigger, like, turn-based battle system. But the original might have a, a Tales sort of real-time thing. I kind of dig that, though, honestly. I was playing the demo, and that's what I thought of was Tales. Well, then I feel like I'm definitely going to give that a shot, because I do typically like Tales games. Yeah, yeah, Tales are pretty solid. Story anything special? I mean, again, I know it's <sighs> mid-90s JRPG, but... <laughs> hey, yeah. man, that was the golden age, dude. The golden age. Uh... Other than just what I watched in the demo... And really, the visuals and just the way the combat looks, I can't say much because I, I don't know anything about this game. Uh, I had no idea it was even a thing. From one of the posts that Brennan linked from Gimatsu, I think I pronounced that. I don't actually know if I pronounced that right. 
we'll say I did. Um, <clears throat> it says the there's an overview of the game from PlayStation.com. When the world was shrouded in darkness, the goddess of mana drew forth the sword of mana to smite the eight. That's a word that I know I can't pronounce. They're called <laughs> monsters of destruction. Bear with me here. I'm not very good. Uh, she sealed the horrors inside the eight mana stones. Mana stones? I, see, English is terrible here. Bringing the realm back from the brink. Weakened uh, from rebuilding the world, the goddess changed herself into a tree and fell into a deep sleep for many years. However, the forces of evil soon sought to break free and gain control of the world. They started a terrible war to further their plot and destabilize kingdoms. Peace was at an end. Oh my god. Uh, mana itself began to disappear from the world and the mana tree started to wither. Some key features are Trials of Mana is a full high definition remake of the third entry in the mana series previously released in Japan in 1995. Uh, players can choose between six main characters and their supporting allies. The story will play out differently in different ways depending on the combination of main characters and allies in their party. So... Oh, didn't already know it was a JRPG. It's well, a very JRPG setting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very JRPG like. Um, at, at least it, it has a lot of replay value, um, since it's going to play out differently depending on who you have in your party and who you have in your host. Um, yeah, I was gonna say a more modern game story wise that. Uh, noticed was like Octopath Traveler or depending on who you played as the story changes. Yeah, that's what mm. I was thinking of. I'm I really like the sound of that. I feel like there's not too many games that I don't know, even like I, I, I hate to bring this always back to Chrono Trigger, but goddamn. <laughs> Chrono Trigger was so revolutionary because it was like it had multiple endings and like multiple decisions that you could do and like that's what made it so iconic and I feel like a well, part of the reason and so that kind of that kind of mechanic, at least in '95, sounds like it would be something that would be well suited for today in terms of like whole choice and like having your choices matter and all that fun stuff that RPGs have been tackling the past couple of decades. So I feel like that would be kind of cool. Like one run, you do one certain party to get one certain ending, and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna go with the complete opposite party kind of like exactly what i did in octopath like what mike said i'm just very curious to know like if you're going to need to do any research into the first two games because why did they just randomly pick the third game just to remake why did they just pick final fantasy 7 there was six <laughs> more bits for that one <laughs> but i thought those were kind of all like standalone games Oh, they are. I don't know anything about Trials of Mana. They could be standalone games. We have no True. idea. But that, that's the thing. Like that. Um, like we don't know that. So, wow, we're really bad at this. Cancelled. <clears throat> is it our fault or is it their fault for not telling us? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll blame the producers. Joe yeah, game it's joke. never, never our fault ever. Exactly. Fantastic. So as we get our pitchforks ready, um, we are going to pitch it <laughs> back to last month and talk about the releases that we have already spoken about now that we have some scores. Um, so we're going to kick it off with Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Um, it's genre, is that pronounced Metrovania? Metroidvania? Metroidvania. Metroidvania, yeah. Hello, I'm really bad at English, even though I have an English degree. No saint. Just printed it out from <laughs> Google. It's just a picture. JK, I actually paid for that piece of paper. Um, it's developed by Moon Studios, published by Xbox Game Studios. It released on PC and Xbox One. It released uh, released on March 11th, and it has a meta score of 90 and a user score of 9, which I'd say is basically about the same thing. So clearly, people really like it. Waited years for that game. Yes. Yeah, so this was this was Cade's submission. Cade, take it away. What are your thoughts, buddy? Hey, cancel the rest of your plans for the evening. <laughs> I have no plans. I have to stay at home. 
ready for the most exciting 30 hours of your quarantine as I go in depth about everything <laughs> about this game. Perfect. Is the game 30 hours or is your speech 30 hours? My speech is. Oh, how <laughs> long is the game? Um, It took me 20 hours to beat. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. There's an achievement you can get if you beat the game in under four hours, which Where? I'm contemplating. <laughs> contemplating doing in a stream, but I have no idea how on earth I'm going to do that because I suck at playing video games. Well, if this is in, like, GDQ, we can submit your playthrough if you do beat it. Maybe you can go on Games Done Quick. No, I don't think anybody wants to watch me cry for three hours. <laughs> because... I mean, because... I'm emotional. <laughs> there are moments that did make me cry, but I'm married, so I have nothing to prove. I will say it. I cried twice. <laughs> <laughs> story is very very touching but no Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest which came out I believe in 2015 and the first game I really liked and it was just fine and then when I saw the sequel I was like oh a sequel would be great I'm excited for that but it's one of those one of my favorite kind of sequels where going back to the first game feels impossible now mm. because they just changed everything in the best possible ways like every single thing they added is just perfect and it's so 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 good and so fun and so pre i have this problem where if i like something i can't think of anything to say honestly that's not bad but... yeah i'm in the same boat that's uh... I dislike something words will flow from my mouth like open sewage but, but here i am getting ready for your 30 hour explanation that's why it's going to be 30 hours because i have to sit and think about what i'm going to say Please. oh okay i gotcha <laughs> um like <laughs> 10 of those like... hours are him thinking <laughs> <laughs> um, the it is a Metroidvania kind of like Metroid and Castlevania, those two games that make that genre. But unlike the more retro Metroidvanias, it's a whole lot easier navigation-wise. There weren't too many moments where I felt like I was lost and didn't know where to go next. I think that only really happened once. Anytime I can play a game without feeling like I have to go Google what to do next, I'm I'm happy. Mm -hmm. um, the combat is the biggest change that they made to this one. They just set it way far above the first game. In the first game, you have this little spirit that ball that floats above your character Ori's head, and you just tap the attack button over and over, and you don't really... It's more like passive combat, really, and the combat wasn't one of the main features of the first game. But in this one, you can mix and match abilities that you upgrade throughout the game, and in some moments, it almost feels like a hack-and-slash game as a Metroidvania, and the combat can just get crazy, and it's wonderful. Ooh, sounds kind of nice, actually. I, my favorite part of the entire thing is the boss fights, because some of the boss fights are just running away from these giant, scary, wonderfully animated monsters, and you have to navigate super precise platforming challenges at the same time and there's music that is going on that i think i said in my review for ori for the website if the music does not get all of the game of the year awards i'm gonna eat my shoes <laughs> i hope you eat your shoes man I'm no wait i don't there. i hope I'm you don't eat your shoes decide if it happens and i'm gonna record myself eating my shoes and i'm gonna send it to <laughs> Whoever is in charge of the game awards and be like, you did this. <laughs> I'll buy you some dressing. Okay, that work. <laughs> French, French. I'm in between wanting to watch you do this and not wanting to watch you go through this. <laughs> this sounds horrible. Well, if you, it makes you feel any better. Um, on Metacritic, it has a what looks like a little badge on it, and it has been awarded the Metacritic Must Play. So I guess that's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and what? It would, oh, sorry. No, no. Oh, no, go for it, go for it, go for it. No, the floor is all yours. Uh, well, my floor is mine. I can't have claim ownership. <laughs> that was the stupidest joke ever. I'm going to leave. I love floor <laughs> jokes. I love this podcast. <laughs> I'm dying. Oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. Tearing up just a little bit. Oh, God. We will laugh really, at literally say, anything. Yes, very much so. <laughs> For it, Brandon, what were you gonna say? Uh, 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 oh, uh, the one thing that I thought was really interesting about Ori specifically is that it seemed to be just as much of a platformer as it was yeah. a Metroidvania, and like, oh yeah, I don't that. And when when you, when you were talking about how like you were 
doing boss battles and also platforming at the same time. That sounds really cool. And that's one of the things I really love. They introduce all of the mechanics that you become familiar with. Like there's a special blue moss that'll appear on walls that you can cling to. Eventually you get a double jump. Eventually you get a move called bash, which you can hold enemy projectiles in the air for a moment and bounce off of them. And they introduce them in such a nice, easy way, one at a time, and lets you get familiar with them that by the end of the game, you're bouncing between like 15 different mechanics and it feels absolutely effortless because of how much time they took to teach you all those things without you realizing you were learning them. So then you just feel absolutely immense with power because of all of the time you've spent learning everything and running around bosses. It's so good. The pacing is awesome. It sounds amazing. It sounds like the game's is like just level design is just top notch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It it released on Xbox Game Pass, which is how I got it because I'm a poor college student, which lets me play a whole bunch of games rather than just buying every single game right at launch. But that is one that I need to buy because I cannot imagine not having that game all the time. So just a quick kind of a quick question. Have you played other Metroidvanias? Like how would you how would you compare it actually takes a lot of notes from Hollow Knight. In, mm. um, in Hollow Knight and in Ori and the Wheel of the Wisps, you can collect... Um, in Hollow Knight, they're called badges. In Ori, they're called shards. Just little upgrades that you can mix and match through different slots, like for some sick weirdos out there in the world that want to make games harder. There's some you can put in that make enemies <laughs> do more damage and take less damage from you. And then there's others that like give you a triple jump or make it so... Um, health and item pickups kind of just magnet to you faster. It makes it a, a whole lot more customizable in the way that you control Ori as well. That's pretty cool too. Yeah, I've always I've always liked Metroidvanias that allow you to like not just. I mean, again, I, I know that this doesn't really count as a Metroidvania, but like the original Metroids, you were just one character, you could do one thing. But in Metroidvanias, I've always liked the idea of being able to progress and customize. Yeah, I've always liked that. There's a lot of fun progression in Ori as well. You heard it here. It's game of the year. Calling it now. Already done. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Who? I don't know. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> They're making a remake of Final Fantasy VII? Oh, shit. They oh, might be, yeah. God. They stopped. Not after Ori. Action. They just took it back. They just throw this whole game away, man. So intimidated. <laughs> Much intimidation. Very... Okay, we're going to pass that along. Um, we're going to talk about a very, very popular game here. Um, it's very popular with me. You know, it's very popular with Mike because he got the Switch that I wanted. Uh, <laughs> don't know if it's popular with Brennan or Cade, uh, but we're going to toss it to Animal Crossing New Horizon. Uh, it's a life simulator published and developed by Nintendo. It's on the Switch. It came out six days ago. It has a meta score of 91. And has the user score of 7. And let me just tell you, I'm really fucking slow at this game. I am so slow. So <laughs> slow. Yeah, same here. What do you mean slow? That's the whole game. That's the whole point. So slow. You got, like... Talking to Brandon before the podcast, and he was telling me, oh yeah, I got this going. I was like, how the fuck do you have that going? I'm like, yeah, way back town. here. <laughs> my town hall is done tomorrow. What's, what's up with you guys? Come on, pick up. <laughs> Exactly. Slow. I had to look up a guide. A guide. Because I didn't know where to turn in all the bugs that I caught. I was oh. like, who do I give these to? And then I was yeah. like, oh, that's what you do. I, um, I found that by accident. You give all bugs to Satan, for they are his children. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. That is, that is true, though. I Honestly. mean, Blathers would agree. Yes, the bugs in this game. Who cares about the bugs? The fossils and the fish. Gimme, <laughs> gimme your fish. That's, that's Brennan's little message. If he ever visits your island, just above his villagers' head, just gimme your fish. Your fish. Well, I don't. I, I don't know. If, I don't think you can give people fish now. I'm thinking about it. Like uh, maybe, yeah. uh, maybe you can. I tried. My friend. Um, I was playing with my friend Emily, and she tried to send me fish, and it wouldn't let her send me fish. Yeah, because I think it's like the whole museum completion thing, and like I think Nintendo's like, yeah, we don't want you to cheese through the museum. 
which yeah, I think you can only show your fish to your friends like, look, I bet you wish you had this. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The show it off feature, <laughs> yeah. Which I do all the time to my villagers and they just clap and I'm like, oh, thank God I have friends. <laughs> 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 At least somebody appreciates my hard work. Right, dude. Oh, as soon as I got emo- like reactions, emotions, I just greet all of my animals. I just say hi every every time I walk by. I wave to them, and they wave back. And I'm like, "Oh wow, I'm not living a- in a pandemic. This is great." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can like see my neighbors and shit. Honest to God, I've been playing the shit out of this game since it came out to avoid looking outside or you know dealing with the state of the world and it's a great time though i do have some complaints i'm in debt that's my <sighs> first complaint my only my only complaint is that like it just feels slow like i get that it's the first week and i get that like nintendo's expecting a lot of new people and stuff but it's just so slow man like i i want to get my town hall i want to be able to change my flag i want to see isabel you know but I'm enjoying it. I haven't put it down since, you know, except for this podcast, this stupid podcast that ruined my Animal Crossing time. Excuse um, you? <laughs> Get out. Bye. We all know what I was doing Bye. beforehand. We we all know, and we all know what I'm going to do after. So, um, I've got a museum to finish Play up, D&D. boys. Play D&D. Yeah, well, that too. What do you think he's going to do during D&D? Oh my yeah, god, exactly. if he does that during D&D, I'm going to smite him straight to the center of the earth. As you're um, playing, you hear in the background. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Call a fucking bitch! <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. Uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be me. That's actually what I'm doing right now. I've been playing Animal Crossing this whole time. Actually, I hate you so much. I'm totally kidding. Yeah, you I was gonna say you too. <laughs> wow, Mike! Wow. Yeah, Mike and I have been traveling to each other's towns back and forth. Just Let's like talk this about whole time. addiction. Hey, I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. I can put it down anytime I want. Then put it yeah. down right now. But I don't want to. <laughs> 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 yeah. Kate, have you been playing any Animal Crossing? Sorry, Haley. No, you're fine. I've been watching my wife play it. Mm. And I How- jumped in her island once, just as local co-op. Ooh, so how how was... Have you ever played Animal Crossing before? I haven't, and my wife hasn't either, but she she is a big, big Stardew Valley fan. Ooh, very nice. And so when I when Animal Crossing New Horizons was first announced, I knew the game by reputation, and so I told her, oh, I think you might like this, and she's like, oh, I don't know. But then the Animal Crossing Direct from earlier this year happened, and she has been dying for the game ever since, and she's been playing it. Ever since it came out, she absolutely loves it. How, and what did you think of it when you hopped in, like, for the co-op? It's oddly cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the exact yeah. Feeling, like, when you dig up the fossils, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. It's just Blathers. cathartic. Blathers is my favorite character because I hate bugs, and so does he. So it's <laughs> my man. That's my guy. <laughs> Every time you give him a fish, he just or a bug, he just goes, "Yuck! Get this away from me!" But actually, thank you, thank you. It's for science. <laughs> but get this shit away from me. Who who are all of the villagers that you guys got for your like your first two beginning villagers that moved onto your islands with you? I got I got Eva, the stupid frog, and I hate her. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, kid cat, which is uh, the the cat wearing like the the red Power Ranger suit or whatever. He's, the crap uh, is awesome. Yeah, he's uh no, he's got like the he's got like the little helmet on and like the little one shirt. But I gave him a kimono the other day by accident and now he's just walking around in a kimono and I love it. Yeah, how about you guys? I got Billy and I got um the kangaroo. I forgot her name. The animal is Billy. Uh he's a goat. That's cu- Billy the goat that's cute. Goat. I don't have any goats. I want a goat. <laughs> And he exercises a lot. <laughs> oh my god, really quick. Okay, so Kid Cat was my first villager, right? And you know how, like, so later on in the game, exterior furniture for some of your villagers. And so I felt kind of bad that Kid Cat, my favorite villager, the first one, didn't get any external furniture. So one day I just 
spent like a solid half an hour just making this man furniture outside and i put a little stone stump outside with a little portable radio because i know he likes to work out outside and all i could just imagine was <laughs> kid cat just working out next to my portable radio and my clothesline that i put next to him and i just it fills me with so much joy <laughs> <laughs> it's just i can't i can't I'm decorating outside thing ever so could you not decorate outside in earlier games no 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 never it's it's always been like in the one before this new leaf you could have structures outside but it was tied to bells and um improving the town and whatnot but in this one you could just literally drop any furniture on the ground and it will materialize it is amazing um i just Oh my god, I have so many flowers. Oh boy. <laughs> and Haley, who were your two villagers that you got? So I have Hazel, who is a oh sheesh, I forget what she is. I actually have my switch right here because I honestly forget who I have. Oh, you're talking about us playing during the podcast. Yeah, what you? Oh wait, Man. Hazel is I think a squirrel, and I have a frog. A male frog. I forget his name. I'm sorry. Hold on. His house is right here. Bro, Open up, um, bitch. I'm coming into your house. Can you remember? What, uh, there's a frog, I think, named Frobert. Maybe. Yeah, I, I listen. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yep. <laughs> He's green and he has little dots on him. I love Frobert. And he says Fribbit. <laughs> yes. Fribbit. Yeah. I'm his so name happy. is Frobert and he says Fribbit. That's what he says. <laughs> He says he, he wants to assemble a superhero squad called the Battle Force Frobert Justice Fighters. Sign me up. He should be protected. <laughs> <laughs> I I am listened to the previous podcast that you guys did, and it sounds like Brennan really hates an animal named Nate. Nate, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm actually really happy that you listened to that and brought that up because, Why? um, oh god, uh, you had to. Okay, but the silver lining is, is that in this one, I was able to put down all of my villagers wherever I wanted. None of them f- screwed up any of my flower beds. <laughs> Nate, that whole Nate scenario will literally never happen again, and I'm not. I could not be more happy. Uh, there, apparently, there were villagers that uh, that like weren't coming back. You know, they essentially got the cut, the Nintendo cut. And I really hope Nate's on the top of that list. <laughs> I just, I want him out of my game forever. He has a unibrow, <laughs> and it freaks me out. Oh, I, um... Not, not to discriminate, but yeah, I mean, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I started collecting the Animal Crossing amiibo cards, and I was like, if I get Nate. I'm sending that shit to Brandon. No, rip it up. Don't. (laughs) Don't even. It's not even worth your time or your money or anything. Just burn it outside. (laughs) Oh, he's a bear. Yeah, you'd think he'd be really cool and shit, but actually he's just, uh, I'm going to put my house right on top of your flower bed that you've been working on for six months. Have fun, asshole. It's green. (sighs) Stop making me visualize this, man. (laughs) Making me visualize my most hated enemy of all time. <laughs> okay, and I always top ten villains list. Nate is gonna get the to the stop. This <laughs> fucker wasted ruined months of my time. Let me bring that Damn up. Man. Because one of my wife's first villagers is a hippo named Biff, and she loathes him. Biff. <laughs> only wants cute villagers and she does not deem him cute but the best part is she hates him so much but he continues to give her wonderful gifts he's so in love with her yeah (laughs) that's amazing when she when she needed to find 30 iron nuggets for the store right after they told her that biff came up to her like here i just got five iron nuggets for you he's flirting with her get him what? I had to get all those by hand. Do you have any idea how long that took me? Nobody loves you. That's say- the reason why. <laughs> oh my god. What did I do? <laughs> Biff really likes your wife, apparently. Maybe too much. Maybe you should have a little talk with Biff. I'm going to open my Animal Crossing just hit him with a butterfly net. <laughs> Away from my wife. <laughs> Whack.
other villager is a dog named Cherry that looks like she came from Hot Topic, and she's awesome. Wait, she's is a... she awesome because she looks like she came from Hot Topic, or because I, I used to work work there? <laughs> That's Probably. amazing. Every sentence with what what? <laughs> did you have to? I have to work there for money. Yeah. No, did you have to end everything with what what? Well, that's what Cherry does. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you said. You did it. And hot topic. Yeah, that's on store box. Thanks for coming. What 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 what? It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a horrible catchphrase. I feel like that well, makes you just cute. sound old. That catchphrase just makes you sound like yes. aged 20 years. <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. What, what? Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my dear. God. Oh, oh I all hurt. I'm crying on the inside. I feel like I just got <sighs> called out. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about Half-Life Alex. Um. It, it's a game, I don't, a lot of people are super excited for it just because it have, has Half-Life in the title, but um, it's a uh, first-person VR, developed and published by Valve. It's on, of course, VR. Um, it was released on March 23rd. It has a meta score of 92 and a user score of 9, so basically on... Same pace. All I'm going to say is I'm so fucking pissed this is a VR-only game. Honestly. Um, I wanted to play this so bad. I love Half-Life. I've been waiting for new Half-Life games for years, and then they do this shit. And to make it worse, it's a, it's an amazing game. I've watched uh, like gameplay bits and stuff of it, and I'm like, this is so fucking awesome. Why can't I play this? I watched just... the demo, and the physics of it is just ludicrously cool. Yeah. I'm just not a fan of VR. Like, I guess even, like, while I was watching some of the gameplay, like, the whole like, pointing to where you want to go to thing, that freaks me out, man. I don't I don't think I'm... I just don't think I can do VR ever. Without even having tried it, I just don't think I can do it. But I want to, because it's goddamn Half-Life. The only VR game I've played where I didn't get a stomach ache was super hot. So, that like, was... wait... Are you one of those people where like you just can't you you like you just can't do VR because of the how it makes you feel? I get so queasy. Mm. Yeah, same here. I played super hot at a friend's house. Well, my brother-in-law's house, but he's a friend, so that works. <laughs> and that was the only one I could play without making me feel like I needed to sit back down. I wonder why. I wonder why just super hot. That's weird. There wasn't as many colors. Maybe I'm not sure. It was just white and red. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, oh, oh. I just saw an article on Facebook that says as of 744 GMT time today, there is now a patch out for Animal Crossing and it now patches the cheat. So there you go, suckers. You ain't fucking cheating anymore. What cheat? Did it patch? What? What cheat? I, the, um, the one that you can duplicate things. Items with another person Ooh. on a cardboard box. Ooh, didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, you have to do it um, on like same screen co op. I tried to do it with Emily on online play, and it wouldn't work. Uh, yeah, it's only available on uh, same screen. But it's like you place a box down, and then you place an item on top of that box, and then you rotate the box. And they, like, pick it up, and when they try to pick it up, they don't actually pick up the item on the box. They pick up, like, a duplicate of it. So you can sell the Nintendo Switch that they give you at the beginning of the game for, like, buku bells. How much can you sell it for? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, <laughs> let me let me Google that for you. Hold on. Because I don't use that Switch at all. It doesn't play Animal Crossing. Yeah, for real. I don't have a TV to hook it up to. What's the point? <laughs> If it can't play Switch games a la the original Animal Crossing playing NES games, what's the point? A nice paperweight. Then that's all it is. It just takes space in my house. And while it's cool and I like it because it's free and it's Nintendo, also, I want to sell it for Buku Bells because that sounds like way more than I have in any bank account. 
real uh, or fake. Speaking of fake account, like Mike said about Half Life Alex, that's going back and forth between games. That's the biggest thing about the VR decision is it's not like, oh, you'll have to maybe save for a few months and get a different console. It's like, do you have life insurance? If you do, you can afford this. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, dream the heck on, my guy. Yeah, that was another problem I had was uh, my computer's not powerful enough to do VR, so I'd have to upgrade my computer. Good then I have God. to buy an expensive ass headset to go with it. How much is the Valve headset? Isn't it like nine hundred dollars? Something like yeah, that. It's $1, yeah, thousand dollars. <laughs> and so yeah, so I was like, I'm not gonna spend fifteen hundred dollars for one game. I really hope that they. I hope that someone mods it in a way um, that. Yeah, somebody is trying to mod it currently to make it you, playable without VR. So man, I wonder I wonder how that would do. I wonder if Valve would even be that would I wonder if Valve would even be cool with that. I no, mean Valve I, I, by the make, game. Valve let people make um hunt down the Freeman um Black Mesa game that came out this year as well. I don't Still, think yeah. Know. Okay, yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. That oh. does make sense. So maybe yeah. maybe they would I mean, more people buy the game if they let the mod go through. Uh, oh yeah, honestly, yeah. If you just if yeah if you even just buy the game outright and then don't have VR, but then still can play it, cool beans. I understand that when Valve makes games, which they haven't been doing for a while, they like to make sure that there's something very revolutionary about it. Like with Half Life Two, they had the gravity gun portal was all about the portal gun. You know, they like to have some kind of very fun gameplay mechanic that's new and unique. Mm. But I'm not sure if VR was the angle to go for because it just limits the audience so much. I was watching... I guess. I just can't imagine it will make too much. I was watching a lot of... Oh, no, sorry. You're good. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, going off of what you said with VR not being the there were some there were some bits in of gameplay that I was watching where someone was trying to they, were, they had a little puzzle with the little orb thing and they had to try to like move I don't even know how to explain it because it was just so weird but they had to like move of their hands in a way that just seemed really unnatural and wonky and the whole time I was like this is the best puzzle that they they could come up with like I, I get that the game is not about puzzles but at the same time I was like there doesn't seem the VR, I wasn't sure if the VR necessarily added anything, kind of like what Kate said, you know, revolutionary. Like, I, I didn't see too much of that in the gameplay, you know what I mean? Other than just, like, the physics being really great and, like, everything being responsive to your character in VR. But outside of that, like like Kate said, there was no gravity gun, really. And, and just with Half-Life 2 specifically, because I've never played the first Half-Life, I feel like the charm of the Half-Life puzzles comes from working around the physics engine. So just having a puzzle that's nothing but a little orb that you hold in your hand and make it light up by rotating a few times doesn't really feel as much like the moments in Half-Life 2 where you have to turn on a blade propeller to make it chop up a bunch of zombies and then use the zombie's corpse to make a seesaw lift up so you can get to the next area. That's something like that's something that I would imagine would be in Alex. I mean, I know that they've already done it, but like again, the same kind of attention to attention to detail, I guess, yeah. in a way, because it just kind of feels like random padding rather than like an actual developed sequence. And I don't want to say that this is me like shitting on the game, but oh, no. yeah, I, but there is something where I'm like, this is great, but like, I don't know, I I don't really know. Uh, I'm looking for. Gravity Gun 2, I think. And maybe that, I'm just not going to get that. I have yet to find the cost of bells for the Switch. What have you been doing this whole time? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm looking for that, because mm. now I'm curious. Anyway. Okay. Fantastic. We got one more game to talk about. And, you know, this one always makes... Mike a little bit happy, a little too happy sometimes when we bring it up. Uh, but Persona 5 Royal, um, JRPG, uh, developed and published by Atlas, uh, platform PS4, came out March 31st. It actually hasn't, wait, it hasn't come out yet. 
Is the uh-huh. time of this recording now? Sad face. But we do have a meta score for it of 95. So, I mean, I guess that's good. If you're going to buy a game this month, this is it. Is it too early to call a game of the year? Oh. I called it the game of the year when oh. they announced it. What, what about Ori? Oh, it's too late to call game of the years. Yeah. Ori, Ori, Ori. It would have <laughs> came up first. <laughs> but no, here's the thing. I love Persona 5. So that if this if Ori had to lose to anybody, I think it should be Persona 5 Royal. Yeah. Well, well fair. Royale, Fortnite. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Kate are gonna meet in Animal Crossing and have a death match. <laughs> Loser gets all of the other person's butterflies. Exactly. Butterflies are a loser's prize. I'm sorry, keep going. Bruce Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I don't know. This uh I mean it's not even out yet and critic reviews are as high as they are. So I think it's oh, out in Japan. Oh yeah, right, yeah. Came mm-hmm. out Japan October. Edit this out, Brandon. You piece of shit, idiot. Don't don't let people know that you're done. Please keep that in there. <laughs> no, I I listen to all of this. <laughs> I never make myself look like an idiot. I make all of you look like idiots, but not me. I hate you so much. I, I'm the editor. Anyway. Hey, I try my I try my hardest to sound like an idiot. Yeah, any arms <laughs> that you guys have, I deliberately leave those in. How about that one time that you farted? <laughs> I, I cut that out and then put it in a separate one. Yes, and I have it saved. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Yes, if Kate is interested, I have. <laughs> He's like, if you ever need to blackmail me, here's the blackmail material. It's okay. If you, ever, if you ever need a quality laugh, here's Brennan just ripping ass on a podcast. Oh, it's so good. The hot anyway. On your keyboard, you can just, there's the fart sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's genius, actually. It's a macro. <laughs> this makes me happy. A soundboard for the podcast, so <laughs> just when someone's way. like, "Oh, the game got delayed." Play Brennan's fart. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> okay, Brennan, this is when you can resume your shit. Thank you. No, it's not. Okay, anyway. so Persona <laughs> Persona Five <laughs> came out in Japan, and it's already getting crazy reviews. So I feel like. The West is gonna copy I mean, but and paste. Is that really surprising though? Everyone liked Persona no. Five uh, the first time around, so I'm not surprised that they're like super hype about this one as well. And from what I'm hearing, because uh, reviews in America have been coming out, uh, this one's actually better than the original. Oh, I want that. <sighs> I have to finish Persona Five. God dang. But that's the beauty, Brandon. You don't have to finish Persona 5 to play this one. See, Dick, I haven't finished Persona 5. I'm just going to start all over. Oh, that... And make mm. better choices so that I can be everybody's friend. Okay, well, that's actually not a bad idea at all. Now that you mention that, I can... This is basically like a free redo. Mm. And hopefully the beginning won't be so uh, long. Nah, it'll probably be longer. See, <laughs> I wanted to play this game while I was in college. Except I tried to, like, watch somebody play it, and I just couldn't get into it. So I was just like, yeah, I guess I'll just never play this game. That's because you gotta... You can't watch this game. You gotta I was a broke it. college student at like, the time. My I didn't eat for three days, okay? What? <laughs> three days? What were you doing? Playing Persona 5. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, 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 just, I just can't. I can't. For craft. <laughs> well, at least we know who's going to make it in the apocalypse when he starts to run out. He's already trained himself. <laughs> oh my god. I'm actually watching a trailer as we speak. <laughs> oh my god. Can't keep this man away. <laughs> well, lucky for you, you only have to wait what, less than a week. Yeah, comes out thirty first. Thirty first. Are you gonna review it? I might do like a sort of impressions piece on it, um, about like differences and stuff like that. I feel like the only way you could do a review for this was if you got the copy like two weeks in advance. The game is just so huge. But Even the then, way... I yeah, I'd need like a month in advance. Yeah. 
from what I'm reading, this is an 80 to 120 hour game. So holy fuck! Yeah, I'm like 60 hours in, and I'm maybe like halfway ish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Point you are. I think my last save that I had was at 62 hours. Yeah, something like that. I finished around or finished. I stopped around Futaba. That was like the last yeah, palace I did. Yeah, did really see. Cade knows. Cade knows that right after Futaba, it gets a little slower, like slow. And that's no, when I, both. Oh no, I stopped because I had to sell my PS4 because I'm a broke. <laughs> okay, well, I just got bored, so I feel kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have my copy of the game because I know that the PlayStation Five has backwards compatibility for the bigger games. Let me but see, now I'm going to sell that and get Persona on... Five Royal. Let's, let's not talk about the PS Five. We'll be here all night. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sony's just making me pull my hair out just a tiny bit, which is making me, like, rethink if I should really trade in my PS4 to get the PS5 with that funky backwards compatibility. Because apparently so it's not going to work on everything. It's not? Yeah, from what it's I've read. Most, it's the most PS4 games, yeah, not all. Yeah. Probably only the big seller ones like Persona 5 or God of War. That's yeah. why oh. I'm like thinking about keeping mine, like getting the PS5 and then trying all my games <clears> on <throat> it to see if it actually works or not. That's what I should do so I can finish Persona. I'll get a PS4 when the PS5 comes out and the PS4s are worth less than a nickel. Genius. Genius. <laughs> That's actually not, like, I'm not even, I'm being completely genuine. I mean, yeah, yes. you're probably going to get one real cheap. Yeah, you probably are. Because everybody's going to be trading in their consoles. Yeah. I will do that. Oh, I'm so excited now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to finish Persona, 4, Persona 5 before I will. Jesus. You're never going to finish that game. It's done. Just say it. Say it. No, I'm going to finish it eventually. Okay, here. I have to find out what the subway means, dude. <laughs> I did, did such big symbolism and I don't know what it is and I take a subway every day for work and well not anymore but that's a different story um <laughs> because of the virus thing okay uh, people you heard it here first <laughs> Brennan's not gonna finish this game please place your bets on if you think he will or not we'll come back in December and see if he actually has but for now I think we're done so we'll give our final thoughts and then wrap this up. We'll go down the list. Brennan. Nate, if you're listening to this, I'm glad you're not a part of my island and I never want you to come and I'm glad you're dead. Thank you. Good night. Fantastic. That is to an Animal Crossing character. That is not to a real person. I am <laughs> Disclaimer. done. So, someone just fast forward to the end. What the? <laughs> right? <laughs> my name's Nate. What? Nate, <laughs> what are your final thoughts? Um, if the Game of the Year awards in December this year, if Persona 5 Royal, Royale, however the frick you say it, and Ori and the Will of the Wisps do not win all of the awards just between those two games, even for Best Shooter, which neither of them are, <laughs> I am going to eat my shoes. We will live stream and that. I am going to be playing Ori and the Will of the Wisps for the rest of the year to try and get all of the achievements for it. And I'm going to keep watching my wife play Animal Crossing and watch her get very angry at Biff the hippo because he won't leave. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Hit him with the net. Mike, what are your final thoughts? Don't call me in April. I'll be playing Persona 5 Royal. You heard it here. <laughs> Mike is off the grid. We won't have him next month for anything. Uh, my final thoughts, uh, I don't know. I feel bad for Player 2's and Animal Crossing. You can't really do much, but I also want to go bury my head in the sand. So, Gulliver, also stop landing yourself on my island. This is the second time I had to wake your ass up. Get a goddamn alarm clock, you stupid bird. I hate you. But you give me nice things, so I guess it's okay. Anyway, we're wrapping this up. I got a train outside. That is it for the month of March slash April for Buy Try It Tonight. We will see you next month. See you later. Bye. Choo-choo.